we're going to move into the team managers uh, going about their or talking about their monthly report. All right, so happy World Mental Health Day. My name's Carly. I'm a PR manager, part of the marketing team. Um, I live in Boone, North Carolina. It's where the mountains that I go to Appalachian State. Um, but other than that, I think we're going to start off with a video that Danielle wanted to show everybody. She's a part of, she's the director of the mental health program, but she had a mental health video for us to see. Wonderful. October 10th is World Mental Health Day. My name is Danielle Dion, and I volunteer as the director of mental health program for Peace 360 Global Initiative. It was just back in late spring when Chris Raja approached me with a wild and worldly vision of peace and how to achieve it. We sparked immediately, and from that moment on, well, here we are. We now have over 50 active and skillful volunteers in the United States alone. We have people with Peace360 Initiative in Canada, in Africa, in Europe, and in Asia Pacific. Mental wealth is a need, and it is needed everywhere. Now, it is clear by how quickly Chris's vision is taking shape, we are onto something really, really special. We've never been more convinced that people all over the world want to change in how we perceive peace and mental wellness and also how we access it. We at Peace360 Initiative are mobilizing mental health one person at a time. We believe we can liberate each other, support change through our shared experiences and lead the way together toward greater peace for all. We are working tirelessly to launch our first virtual telementoring program. And so far, we've hired over 30 skilled interns who are getting ready to begin supporting you very soon. Our program is being built by our whole team for you. And we're gonna use this US program as a launch pad to initiate similar programs near each of our country representatives around the globe. We will not and quite frankly, at this point, cannot stop this amazing momentum. We are ready, we're working hard, and together we can make peace for all. At Peace360, World Mental Health Day is every day. Really just want to welcome everyone to Peace360 Initiative. Um, on World Mental Health Day. I just had a couple words that I really think it's important that we acknowledge us all being here together. And on behalf of the board of directors, we really just want to thank everyone for being here. Um, I'm here today on the stolen land of the Musqueam and Coast Salish people in Vancouver, Canada. And I honor this land and every day I work and play here, I remember the founding people who were here before me. So I just want to encourage everyone to take time out wherever you are and acknowledge those who need our truth and our reconciliation efforts to remain at the forefront of our minds as we do this work. Um, it's really important that we do that. We have people here from all over the world today and it's a global family. Um, we're a global family of support and we're growing and we know that mental illness is everywhere and it's every day. Um, and I'm certain in some ways we've all been affected by mental health. So we have lived experience that's valued and um, here at Peace360, we really want to hear about that and we really want to mobilize people. And we know that pain and loneliness um, can cause confusion and that trauma is a part of everyday life. And when we're loved, we, we feel this connection and we can help build um, this community doing that. So sometimes we're left alone and we don't know where to turn. And each of us has an opportunity to mobilize our experiences by taking action. So I just want to really recognize everybody that's here today and really honor World Mental Health Day. And um, so on behalf of Peace360, thank you for being here. And we look forward to our speakers today. Thank you, Carly. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Danielle. If um, the mental health team would like to introduce themselves, take it away. Hi, my name is Heather Moser. I am the mental health program manager. Um, I hope that everybody was able to make it today out of our mental health team. 
Um, it's awesome that so many of us are able to get together and, and celebrate this awesome day. Um, so I will pass it off if she is here. Um, one of our newer members of the mental health team, Sarah Casper. Hi, <laughs> I'm here. Um, I'm just gonna be a program coordinator. Uh, I'm living in Connecticut and I'm very excited to come on board and learn from everyone and uh, take everything in. And feel free if any of our supervisors are here, um, maybe one of them can pipe up and we can kind of introduce team by team. Hi, my name is, oh, oh sorry. go ahead. Go ahead, you go ahead. My name is Jessica Venegas. I live in uh, Covina, California. I'm a, one of the supervisors for Peace uh, 360. And um, if the rest of my team who's here would like to go ahead and mic up, um, go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Taylor Burton. I'm on Jessica's team um, and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Hi, uh, my name is Denise. I'm also on Jessica's team, I'm currently in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Divine Dennis. Good morning, everyone. My name is Divine Dennis. I am in Jessica's team, and I am from Philippines, currently in Hawaii. Is that everybody from the, that team? Yes, it is. Okay, if is we want to move to, oh, oh. I was is there if we can move to here to the day, day when Jeremy can team? start that off. Hi, hello. Um, this is Jeremy Love from the marketing team. Um, I'm the marketing manager and I'm originally from Singapore, currently here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And I believe Sonia is here as well. So maybe Sonia can go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Hi, yeah. Um, I'm part of Jeremy's team, Lee in Hong Kong. Is that all the marketing team members we have today? Okay, if the research team wants to introduce themselves. Hey, I'm Julie Wild and I am the research manager. Um, I'm in North Carolina as well. So I wanna reach out to you other North Carolina people. Um, and I'm gonna pass it over to Dr. Fouts because I just saw her come in, excited. I was just talking about you in another meeting. Hi, Julie. Hi, everybody. My name is Brittany Fouts. I am the vice president of Peace360. It's nice. Art, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Yes, my name is Arthur Sampaio. I have joined P360 just over a week ago, and I'll be a research advi advisor for the uh, research team. Um, I'm Swati Nair. I'm the research coordinator for P360, and I'm currently in Dallas, Texas. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Giselle Segovia and I am a research specialist and I, uh, I reside in California.
Yeah, those just now um, joining are saying that they missed their chance to introduce themselves. Y'all can jump in whenever you'd like. Thanks, Carly. I think Perfect. it's a good idea. Can you guys hear me? Okay, I'll go first. I am. Um, my name is Darvu. I am from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I am one of the um, team supervisors here at Peace 360. Um, I'm going to pass it to MJ, and then MJ, you could pass it on to one of the other members, okay? Hi, everyone. I'm MJ. I reside in Wisconsin. I'm a mental health mentor at Peace 360. So glad to be celebrating World Mental Health Day today with you guys. And I will pass it off to Sammy. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm Samantha. I am in Florida right now. And I am on Thursday for the Mental Health Mentors. Uh, and I'm going to pass it off to, I'm not sure who else is here right now. Hi, I'm, I'm here, Nicole. I'm from New Jersey. And I'm a mental health Hi, I'm Emily. I'm also on their team. Um, I'm from Wisconsin and I, I'm a mental health mentor as well. Hi, Emma. I'm at okay. the last one. Um, I'm also on Dare Street. Um, and I am currently a senior um, in college at Vermont. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Stephanie. I am also a team lead with the mental health um, group. Um, and Abby, I will pass it to you. Hi, I'm Abby. I'm a mental health mentor on Stephanie's team and I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And Anushka is here. Hi everyone, I'm Anushka. I'm also on Stephanie's team. I'm a mental health mentor. Hi everyone, I'm Allie and I am on Stephanie's team as well um, and I am from California and I am happy to be here today. Hi, Hi that was everybody. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Hi everyone, I'm Anju Kotwani. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm the team supervisor in one of the mental health teams. And I'll pass it on to Gloria. Hey, my name is Gloria Logales. I am one of Anju's mental health mentors, and I currently live in Florida. And I will pass it on to whoever has not gone yet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charlene. I'm also under Anju's team, and I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wow, what a large mental health team. I can see, I think we have a couple more people. I think we have a couple more people still to introduce, but I'm getting a message from Chris that it is time to, to set our uh, to get our speakers going and we will take some moments so if you haven't introduced yourself let's uh make sure you put up your hand at the end of the meeting or put your your name in the chat and we'll ensure that uh, you have a chance to introduce yourself um to the group um thank you charlene if you want to introduce the speakers so yeah we're gonna start with our first guest speaker dr jim renke and he's going to talk about faith and mental health um, he serves as a regional minister for the North American Baptist Conference of Churches, and he works with church leaders and spends time encouraging and resourcing pastors and congregations. And he's also been a big encouragement to Chris as well. So Jim, if you would like to take it away. Great, thank you so much. It's, uh, it is a joy to be here with you all and see such a great vibrant group of people. Um, I am living outside of the Chicago area, so um, just enjoying a beautiful sunny day here. The leaves have started to change color, which is always a, probably one of the best times of year in this in the upper Midwest. Um, it's been uh, my privilege to be invited to talk about uh, faith and mental health, and 
and uh, after uh, being in uh, different ministry roles for the last 35 years, I've had a lot of uh, connection with people inside and outside of faith, and have seen the uh, the benefit that faith, uh, a well uh, integrated faith, can uh, have on someone's well-being. Um, the reality is we, I'm going to try to share something here. Let me see if I can get to this here. I'm a bit of a rookie on this one. So uh, if you bear with me for a second. Um, I think I just, that's nah, not it. Sorry about this here. I think I need to share the screen first. All right, I don't know what y'all can see. I think you can see the outline at least of my presentation here. Let me. All right, let me go back. So uh, as we as we begin, um, the fact is that most of us don't have to look very far to recognize that we've progressed techno technologically, but we've lost community. And uh, at once we're the most connected people to the, to the whole world, but we're the least connected to one another. Um, we have free uh, access to massive amounts of information, yet we seem to know less of what it means to live with a sense of fulfillment and purpose. And the struggles are apparent, uh, become apparent in the sheer numbers of people who are dealing with their despair through addictions and psychoses, social, uh, serial relationships, and even suicide. Uh, mental health has become a discussion for all spheres of life, and there's an increasing lack of peace. We are more polarized and more antagonistic than we ever have been before. We, are, we have an increasing lack of peace, and we're an unsettled bunch of people in the world today. And, uh, and I'm grateful for uh, Peace 360 Initiative and groups like this who, uh, whose efforts give people a path of discovery, a discovery of purpose and unity and peace. Um, today I want to discuss with, how, discuss with you how a well-formed faith can aid in the recovery and development of mental health. Let me just start by saying, though, that there are a lot of religious people and religious practices which actually hurt the goal of good mental health. Um, there are oppressive systems which keep people trapped and they can actually keep people from experiencing the peace and wholeness that we all seek. They seem, they, they, we, we know that they damage people using them as pawns for their own power rather than lifting up the value of the individual and the good of the community. That being said, I do believe we can use faith, a faith foundation to encourage people to engage a life of meaning and value to others. A well-formed faith is one which is integrated into all parts of life, and uh, it moves a person toward ideals that benefit the individual and the community as a whole. Faith provides a meta-narrative by which to understand the world, and it gives definition to one's own story so the individual can participate in that grand story to the fullest. The narrative of most faith traditions provide a framework for answering the questions of life. The, these are the questions that, when left unanswered, can motivate people uh, to create their own answers, often in isolation and unhelpful ways. There are three questions that I've listed as the mo at, that most faith stories seek to help us answer. The first question is, who am I? This is our basic need for identity. Uh, there was a children's book that my children read and now my grandchildren have read and uh, it's entitled, Are You My Mother? <laughs> if you uh, know the children's book, I believe it's a little duckling that goes around from item to item. Uh, it, it talks to people, it talks to uh, machines and whatnot and always asks the question, Are You My Mother? Uh, that's the question of identity. We, uh, we we need to know where we fit in the world and to whom we belong. And not being able to answer that question leaves one without the ability to create a path which fits them and at the same time unites them with the world 
they live in. The second question that uh, faith often answers and helps us answer is, why am I here? Building on the first question of identity, this is the question of meaning. Does my life have value? Is there a purpose for me in the world? Uh, or am I just taking up space? Does what I do matter in the greater story of the world? This question of meaning helps set goals and boundaries on thoughts and behavior. And faith can give a framework which help, will help the individual discover the why of their existence. And the third question that uh, isn't, isn't always put this way, but uh, I label it as the uh, what time is it question. Uh, this is the question that helps us confront the nature of the world. The world's a difficult place. It's a place with struggle and pain, and for each of us, our experience of the world at some point comes to an end. A few years ago, I saw a documentary of elephants in the wild. One of their uh, group had died, an older elephant, and uh, the documentary showed how after this death had occurred, how the elephants actually uh, uh, kind of lined up and went by that uh, dead e elephant, and almost like we do at a funeral, uh, where they, they, they stopped and they considered and they mourned the loss of the one that had been part of them. Um, but it was evidence that while they mourned, I don't think that they stopped and asked the question that we often ask at a funeral when we're confronted by that reality. Uh, these elephants didn't reflect on their own death. They just mourned the death of the one that was gone. But the reality is that we all live a life that is finite, that will come to an end. And faith helps put a definition to that, helps us understand that. Most faith stories give us a framework by which to reflect on, prepare for, and even find meaning in the brevity of our stories within the grand story. Faith stories provide reasons for enduring the trials of life. In every faith story, trials and struggles have meaning. They aren't disconnected events to endure, but they are part of a story of, of moving individuals and communities forward. Faith spurs us to create order in the midst of apparent chaos, to make an impact that will last beyond ourselves. So the stories of faith connect us. They connect us to the great story, but they also connect us relationally. They connect us to the greater God, or the greater good, which some call God. They help us find uh, ourselves within the one who is greater than us. My son uh, just came through uh, alcohol rehabilitation. After uh, 10 years of struggling with this addiction, he's on the, the path to recovery. And, uh, and it's interesting, we went for a session uh, at the, the facility he was at, it was a session for families. And they made this, they quoted this, they said, the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is community. Addiction is isolation. And we long for that connection. We long for the connection with a, a greater story, with the one who is, who is stronger than us, that can help us in times of trial. But also we look for that connection with one another. Um, we need that together. Faith helps us create patterns which help others maintain and grow in their relationships with the other. Learning the patterns of giving and receiving love, learning to walk in reconciliation with others are key to maintaining healthy connections and therefore, I believe, mental health. There are also practices which persons participate in, in the meta-narrative of faith. In some traditions, they're called spiritual disciplines. And spiritual disciplines are activities which, uh, Spiritual disciplines are activities which help us participate uh, in that grand story. They create space for contemplation, reflection, a growing awareness of the world and of ourselves. And these practices help create patterns and rhythms to life. Prayer, meditation, gathering together, learning and serving others all help people reorient themselves to that great story, that meta-narrative. This helps them understand their, their own stories, working out the questions of identity 
meaning, and even perseverance. So no faith is perfect at forming individuals. Every faith participant, including those who lead, are flawed. But I believe a healthy faith perspective can invite us to walk toward the ideal in the company of others, for the good of others. And that provides a foundation for self-understanding and a framework for how to walk well in the world. So faith is, uh, in, in summary, I think faith is a wonderful tool if we can understand people's faith and their faith stories, what they relate to and how they connect with the greater world, we can encourage them uh, to walk that path toward uh, harmony with the grand story that they hold to and harmony with one another. Thanks again for the opportunity to share today. Thank you so much. That was really good. Thank you. Um, so next, we're going to have our second guest speaker, which is Dr. Evan Hoffman. Uh, he's here to talk about conflict management and mental health. He's an assistant professor of conflict resolution at Nova Southeastern University, and he's published numerous articles about conflict prevention and resolution, as well as peace building, meditation, and he provides consulting services to his community. So Dr. Hoffman, if you'd like to take it over. Yeah, thank you, Carly. Good morning to the team, uh, the team at Peace 360, the Peace 360 Initiative, and uh, happy World Mental Health Day. Thank you for that lovely introduction. And thank you to uh, Chris and Danielle for uh, inviting me to come in and speak with your team today. Um, I've been asked to talk a little bit about conflict management and mental health and what's the nexus or the connection between the two. And I should note, um, that I'm, I'm a scholar practitioner of peace building and conflict resolution. And so I have over uh, 15 years of experience working in a variety of contexts, um, doing research, but also applied work. And I have a certificate in uh, psychology, a BA, a master's degree in uh, post-war recovery studies, where I went to post-war Bosnia to study the topic of post-traumatic stress disorder, um, community healing and recovery and reconciliation in, in the aftermath of violent conflict. And, uh, and that a lot of my thinking uh, is really spurred by that uh, research that I undertook there in Bosnia and saw um, the aftermath of war firsthand. So when <clears throat> Chris invited me to speak about the linkage between conflict management and mental health, it was a, a welcomed opportunity for me to um, sit back and reflect a little bit and really consider what is the overlap between these maybe on first glance seemingly uh, divergent uh, activities and wh where is the overlap and as I began to think about like what does that mean how does mental health support conflict management and vice versa um, the basic assertion that I'd like to make today is that uh, promoting good mental health really assists with conflict management and creating greater levels of peace. So mental health supports the peace building agenda. Um, I would also put forth for your consideration that the opposite may be true as well, where um, struggling with different mental health issues and, 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 and uh, so on, may undermine the peace building agenda. It will make peace more difficult. So what does that look like in practice then? Well, we know that conflict will often follow a cycle that sometimes looks like a bell curve where it'll start out on the left side as a low intensity and then tensions will begin to rise and then there'll be some kind of peak or where the uh, conflict um, reaches a, its a pinnacle and then there's a de-escalation phase so you hear that in the news right now a lot about you know the police need to de-escalate and how do we de-escalate political violence in the united states and, and stuff like that it's a it's a very popular term right now so i would say that mental health is really an important factor at all stages of the conflict and we know um that when 
conflict first emerges, which is over here on the left side of your screen, the uh, general approach is that we want to try to prevent conflict. We want to prevent it before it first emerges, if possible. And that may mean addressing the drivers of conflict, addressing the systemic uh, root causes of the conflict. And if we're unable to effectively address them, then the conflict emerges, but at least we can try to walk it back a little bit and hopefully it won't reach um, uh, its full uh, peak, its full pinnacle. And if we're unable to prevent it, it reaches its top uh, peak here and we're looking to somehow respond to conflict and then there's this phase afterwards of recovery. And so that's some of the work that I did in uh, post-war Bosnia, where I was looking at, they went through the war here and there was various different responses. There were mediators who were trying to, um, and they did eventually reach a peace agreement, the uh, Dayton Accords. Um, and then there was uh, peacekeeping forces and so on. But I was looking at this phase over here. What was the impact of the war on soldiers and civilians and how do we help them to recover? Um, just as a side note, what I discovered in that research project was that the international community was funding a whole lot of work, which is really great, um, in the post-war phase. And they were doing it under the name of trauma recovery, trauma healing, reconciliation. Um, but the range of projects and the range of work that I saw happening in this recovery phase um, was vast. I saw everything from funding uh, projects for, for young kids to play uh, football or soccer, I guess they call it in Europe, uh, uh, sports basically. Um, they were funding women to come together and learn vocational skills, learn jewelry making and have dialogue. And what I found is that a lot of that works for kind of mild cases of, of post-traumatic stress disorder and it helps with community healing. It helps people to come together. And in particular, when there's a stigma against mental health and there's a stigma against seeking treatment, um, then it's okay to run these projects where you, you say it's a vocational training project and, and people are learning employ, employment skills. But uh, inevitably what happens is they, they're chatting with one another and they're connecting and they're sharing stories and <clears throat> they're learning like my experience isn't really so di different from your experience. And it's creating that sense of community and connection. And there's a healing function provided through those types of projects, the sports projects, the vocational projects, and so on and so forth. Uh, unfortunately, however, though, there are some people who um, require what the, their, their PTSD is so uh, severe that that's not enough to really help them to, to move forward and, and to heal. And in those particular cases, what I argued in, in my master's thesis was that clinical Western style uh, psychiatry, psychological help, possibly medications, because one of the, one of the uh, main uh, issues with PTSD is this hyper elevation of the entire system. So sometimes some medication can be helped or can help, but it shouldn't be used on its own. It should be combined with other treatment options. So <clears throat> um, in some here, at all stages of the conflict escalation cycle, <clears throat> pardon me, um, mental health plays an important part. So if we want to dig into this a wee little bit deeper, and that's what we're going to do on the next slide. Um, I present to you here a table where on the first column on the far left, we have um, Maybe what we would call, I don't know, there's a negative sign up there, but we would say like uh, emotions and states of being that are more uh, in the negative direction. And then in the next column over, your middle column, we've got more positive uh, kinds of uh, emotions and states of, of, of mind. And then in the, in the right column, we've got how does that particular positive emotion or, or state of mind, how does that contribute to peace building? So if we start with alienation, um, that's the opposite of feeling connected with people and feeling linked. And so the, 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 the uh, 
the opposite of that is building up the sense of connection. And the reason why that is important for peace building is because it turns them into us. And so we know from looking at polarized societies and polarized conflicts, one of the first steps is the two sides. They, they, they uh, dehumanize one another and they say it's us versus them. And it's this black or white thinking. And, and the way to overcome that then is to build up this sense of connection amongst people. What about the next one? What about despair? Maybe you felt despair at certain points in your life. Um, the opposite of despair I would put forth is the notion of hope, to be hopeful. And that can energize, energize and motivate us. So if you have despair about the future, you want to give up. You say there is no hope. There's no point in trying to make any positive changes. There's no point in, in going on. And so hope is a powerful, positive emotion that's part uh, that helps to energize and motivate us towards change and making peace. I like this one and I kind of struggled with this. And a, a lot of conflict situations are sometimes fueled by this notion of, yeah, not my problem. I'm not getting involved in it. I got other things to do. And it's a sense of, um, again, it's a bit of a lack of connection, but it's, it's saying that I live my life and you live your life and I don't care if you're struggling or I don't care if you're not doing well. <clears throat> That's not my problem. Not my problem to help out people who are uh, struggling with addiction or, or, or uh, don't have food security or, or whatever it may be. So I was figuring that's not very helpful to peace building. And I thought to myself, well, what is the opposite of that kind of mentality about me, not my problem. And I thought really the opposite of that is empathy and empath empathy, which is different from sympathy. Sympathy is feeling sorry for somebody. Empathy is saying, I know what it's like to be in your shoes. I can understand what things are like from your perspective. And I may feel sympathy for you because of that. I feel sorry for you, but empathy, it's a powerful um, way of connecting people. And so when we can turn that mentality of shrugging your shoulders and saying, eh, not my problem, and convert that to more of an empath uh, empathetic approach, what that does in terms of supporting the peace building agenda is it helps us to recognize the shared humanity of others. And so we want to help others. <clears throat> Depression, uh, a major problem. Uh, I don't have the latest statistics, but we know that a uh, huge uh, frag segments of the population in different countries experience depression from time to time. The opposite of that, I struggled with this one a little bit too when I was trying to put my thoughts down here, but I said, wouldn't it be excited? And then excited about what? Well, we want to be excited about changes. Um, some changes, of course, are unwelcomed and they do cause depression. <laughs> But we want to have changes that uh, excite me and energize me. And we want to be excited about the future. And again, this provides this motivating force towards peace building, towards making the world a better place to say, I'm not going to give up. I'm excited about tomorrow. And we can make, today maybe was terrible. Today maybe sucked. Today might have had some things that were very negative. But I can still be excited and make tomorrow better than today was. And I mean, that's really one of the gifts of, you know, um, each day is a new day. <clears throat> each moment is a new moment. It always gives us this opportunity to, uh, to initiate change. What about this one? Have you ever felt unbalanced in your life? You just feel out of sorts. Something's not right. I'm, I'm, I feel off. I've heard people use that phrase. I feel off today. I'm not feeling right. I would say the opposite of that is to feel centered or grounded maybe is a better word. And we know that when you're talking to someone who's very centered, very grounded, that it can create a warm and inclusive atmosphere. And that can be helpful for interpersonal conflict resolution and interpersonal peace building because you feel like, hey, this person is really calm and they're really easy to talk to and 
it creates a nice warm environment. Anger, of course, there's this word calm. So I would say that calm is probably the opposite of anger. And that, again, a calm demeanor, a calm mindset, mindset can help with meaningful communication that isn't harmful. So you're not speaking from a place of anger. You're not inflicting pain and hurt upon someone else. And basically when you're calm and you're speaking from a place of calmness and not a place of anger, you're setting a positive tone for the conversation again. Trauma, feeling traumatized. I would posit or I would put forth for your consideration that the opposite of feeling traumatized is to feel whole, to feel complete. And if you can move from being traumatized to feeling like a whole and complete person, then what you're doing in terms of motivating uh, others is you're setting an example for others that forgiveness, healing, and reconciliation is indeed possible. There are some people who are victimized and they live in, their, and they live in that state of victimization. They, they don't want to move forward or they can't move forward. And for people that are able to do that and they're able to come back together and feel complete and whole, it sends a powerful message that, hey, I can forgive, I can move on, we can set aside our differences, we can heal, we can reconcile. Last one for you here, feeling disconnected. It's a little bit like unbalanced, I guess, a little bit. I feel disconnected today. I'm not, I'm not feeling all here. So the opposite of that is to be fully present and mindful in this moment. And there's all kinds of great mindfulness exercises to bring you back into the moment. Five, check out Google 54321 if you haven't heard of that one. So why is it important to be fully present and mindful? How does being fully pre present and mindful contribute to peace building and conflict resolution? Well, it allows me to be responsive and in the moment so I can respond to you in an authentic and genuine way. And it shows I care because you now have my undivided attention. I'm not distracted with my own internal monologue or my own internal dialogue. I'm not distracted by my cell phone. I'm not distracted by things going on <clears throat> elsewhere in the environment. I'm here with you. I'm in this moment. And you, what would you like to tell me? You have my undivided attention. And that's powerful. That tells people I care. So this really contributes to the sense of empathy. So being present and mindful really sends a message of I care. Okay. So that's a whole lot of info for you about, you know, different states of mental health and well-being. And I'm mindful of my time and this is my last slide. So um, what, so what, what do we do with all of that, Evan? What do we take away from this? Well, here's a couple of thoughts I'll leave you with as a closing. What should I do? One, I would say meditate. And I was on the Facebook group this morning and I saw a wonderful post by someone else. I can't remember the gentleman's name but he was talking about in his post that said something about meditation being powerful. And I agree with that. So meditate number two, practice mindfulness. So how do I come down into this moment? How do I ground myself? How do I center myself? Self care. Uh, it's another buzzword we hear a lot about these days. You can't help others if you're, you know, really not in a good place yourself. So to be really powerful and effective for other people, you need to work on yourself first. And uh, I would say don't neglect um, both the physical element of taking care of yourself, so good nutrition, good sleep, et cetera, et cetera, but also the mental part of self-care as well, which is maybe uh, some what our previous speaker was talking about, about faith and, and finding your purpose and, and uh, all of the, that aspect as well. Um, promote good mental health hygiene for yourself and others. So that's helping to remove that stigma that I was talking about, you know. Um, Three is anger management. Uh, pardon me, not three, but <laughs> the next one is anger management. After that, I would suggest, uh, you know, practicing nonviolent communication, building personal and community resilience. And so there's another word we hear a lot about uh, is uh, resilience. And so you can do that through psychoeducation. And lastly, I would say be a peace leader. Light the way for others by making yourself a peace leader show that peace is possible, inspire others, 
and there you have it. So thanks for your attention this morning. And uh, that's the end of my talk. I invite you to follow me on my uh, social media if you wish. And there's my Thank LinkedIn. you. Thank you so much, Evan. And it's so great to see your face and hear your voice and your wisdom and to just absorb um, your knowledge. Thank you so much for, for linking conflict management and mental health. I knew you were our guy. And uh, I, I think now I have a million other ideas and I want you to s just keep talking. I just also want to thank Jim um, for bringing up such an important point about these three questions that um, are so important that we know who we are and why we're here and how we can help. And I, I think faith is definitely an opportunity for many people to do that. I'd like to link what I'm hearing from both of you just quickly is this idea of community. community. You mentioned a lot about community, both of you, and liberation. So freedom and being liberated. I heard, you know, when we build connection and then I heard when we move past the connection piece, we have an opportunity to mobilize our mental health or our mental illness and come together talk about ways that we feel oppressed and what the trauma looks like and unite our voices and move beyond the idea of being a victim of something towards being a, a change agent, a peacemaker. Um, and putting this to action is so liberating and healing. Um, and that's really what the work we're doing here is healing each other through action and taking our lived experience and learning how to transform our communities through nonviolent communication, through um, really uh, effective peace building skills. So we're grateful to have both of you here so we could learn our greater language. I loved Evan that you mentioned, not, mentioned nonviolent communication. I am a big fan of Rosenberg's work and you know I am. And I am so looking forward to bringing this work to Peace 360. Um, Thank you both so much. Um, I encourage everybody on this call to reach out to Jim and Evan, follow them both. Their knowledge is vast and we are grateful. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, thank you. Um, yes, I agree. They were both incredible resources and I thank you both for your speak speaking today. Um, we're gonna move into the team managers uh, going about their, or talking about their monthly reports. If Heather wants to take over for the mental health program. Reports, if Heather wants to take over for the mental health program. I sure will. Uh, okay, thank you again to the speakers. Um, that was like, I'll echo what Danielle said, um, excellent information and um, I think we can definitely take away uh, a lot of what they spoke about. Um, but I will get on to what we've been working on in the last month. Uh, so in the last month, uh, the mental health team has been working on um, primarily strengthening relationships uh, within our teams by the incorporation of projects led by the supervisors that encompass the values um, of P3I. Uh, these projects have been thought up by our highly motivated self uh, or I should say highly self-motivated supervisors and interns. Um, furthermore, we introduced a topic of the month in an effort to educate each other using the wide breadth of cultural, educational, and personal backgrounds of our amazing team members. Um, in fact, this month's topic is something that was brought up on self-care. And much of the discussion so far has revolved around the importance of self-care and what that looks like to different people. Uh, finally, at our next meeting, we are planning on introducing the planning phase of the build and discuss with our mental health team um, what that's going to look like. So uh, that's kind of where we're at now. It's been a busy month um, and we have a lot, lot more work to do. So we're excited. Thank you, Heather. If Jeremy wants to talk about the marketing team, what we've been up to. Yes, hello everyone. Um, my name is Jeremy, the, again, the marketing manager, and I'm gonna be speaking on behalf of the marketing team. Um, so ever since the implementation of marketing, we have introduced um, Google Analytics and all of the social media accounts really located to Peace360 initiative. And currently now I cannot give you any hard statistics. I mean, 
this wouldn't be a marketing discussion if it wasn't for statistics, but I cannot give that because we are still new. A lot of the numbers are still from the internal side, not really from the external. So it's skewing the data. So again, um, just a brief uh, intake on this. Instagram, we're seeing a little bit better approach, uh, more increase in engagements. Facebook and LinkedIn has been the best so far. Um, we're getting about 100, 560, 536 page views on Facebook and a lot of engagements here and there, especially on YouTube too. And on Google Analytics, we're also working on a new website for uh, PC360. So we are really looking also at the contents, the whole marketing teams looking at the contents and rebuilding the website as well. Um, and the content side uh, where Andrew is writing our blogs, uh, we are also dependent on the research and the mental health team from providing us the information. So we can go ahead and write up the contents and publish it. But so far we've been doing so, we've been working hand in hand and it's very, it's very well done so far, I believe. And yeah, that's all I have for today. And back to you, Carly. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, if Julie wants to talk about what her research team has been up to. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, this month, we've all had the opportunity to get to know one another. Um, I'm, I feel really privileged to know all of these wonderful people and um, having the opportunity to meet Dr. Sampaio last week was great. He's coming on as our research advisor to kind of help us flush out a timeline. Um, you know, our background is so diverse and I think we can all agree that mental health is not a unilateral issue. So we're kind of all coming at it with different backgrounds. I have a public health background. Um, and so we are working towards a more solid timeline. Um, this, obviously the two fundamental things that um, Chris has asked us to look into is racial, racial reconciliation and mental health, um, probably in the form of a lit review or a meta-analysis. Um, our immediate objective at this point um, has taken kind of our separate interests and in cultivating infographic material. Again, <laughs> that's my public health speaking there. Um, I think it's a really great way with our social media accounts to kind of quantify our data. Um, and so moving forward, I'm, I'm hoping to have more solid stuff to share, but we're really excited. Thank you, Julie. Um, and then, or we can move on to chapters team. Tier is not here, but yes, if the chapters team would like to talk about what they are doing. All right. Uh, hello, Kelly. Can all of you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, Roger. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak for Peace 360 Initiative once more. Um, Guang Roger, as uh, most of you already know, I'm in Cameroon and I'm serving as the regional coordinator for Africa for Peace 360 Initiative. So, um, together with uh, Ruth, uh, we've been trying to get the movement spread on the African continent. At the moment, we have um, 10 countries that um, we have uh, representations in these countries. We have the Gambia, Nigeria, Cameroon, Rwanda, Togo, Senegal, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Somalia, and Sierra Leone. So uh, most of these representations have been uh, trying to sell the idea of the movement in their respective countries, and they have initiated uh, some, uh, they have made some moves to initiate the chapter development for the various countries. Uh, it's true that uh, the pace is not very excellent as we would have loved it to be, but uh, the, the, the various chapters are developing gradually. For instance, in uh, Rwanda, they have already succeeded in having uh, a national committee made of eight persons that have uh, brought in the idea of uh, the Peace 360 initiative and that they wish to uh, spread uh, this idea uh, nationwide out there. 
they have succeeded in having a meeting already. And of course, um, they are still having some little difficulties uh, during this era of the pandemic of hosting meetings regularly. Uh, for the Gambian team, uh, headed by Salifu, as you already know, he's been doing some marvelous jobs there from, uh, from, from the Gambia. Uh, they are mobilizing several youths to register for the Peace 360, the Gambian chapter. And of course, since uh, Salifu was moved to the regional coordinate of Africa, they have already appointed uh, the person that we will replace him, that will, of course, be in an interview with uh, the, the, the regional directory, with the regional team that uh, Ruth and uh, the two regional coordinators. And of course, um, they aren't facing any serious challenges right now, for they're already looking forward to, to re getting the movement registered. Uh, in Nigeria as well, it's not bad news, it's very encouraging. Andrea and his team, they're doing credit, a very credible work from uh, Nigeria. They have been able to put together the National Committee Board as well, and have been able to hold a Zoom meeting uh, through which they tried in assigning some uh, regional uh, representatives within Nigeria that were endowed with the responsibilities to raise awareness and spread the, the, the notions of the Peace 360 initiative on the entire Nigerian territory. Uh, in Togo, uh, they have also succeeded in, uh, in hosting the first uh, ever meeting and they have succeeded in having some persons with, uh, that would uh, chair the national committee and coordinate and reflect on uh, how they are going to engage in the development of the Togolese chapter. Uh, they intend to expand the team with time and of course they did something that was very remarkable. The, uh, one of the members co-hosted the conference in Lomé at the Youth Center on Non-Violence where some uh, uh, Togolese youths were gathered and of course uh, enlightened on the, 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 the negativities and uh, effects of conflicts. The major challenge that they are facing so far is to develop an action plan because uh, very few persons are there at the, in Lume, at the, uh, in the capital. So they hope to uh, hold another meeting where they will bring out some reasonable suggestions and recommendations that will be communicated to the persons that reside at the regions. So for now, they hope to get a much bigger team that will be able to descend to community levels to spread uh, the nice works of Peace 360 initiative. In Cameroon too, uh, we succeeded in establishing uh, a very huge uh, membership for the National uh, Committee, about 12 persons. We held um, a very important meeting and of course decided on the strategies and techniques that we we're going to use in developing uh, our chapter and of course we decided to assign some tasks to uh, some members of the national committee on how we'll be animating our facebook page uh, with peace messages mental health messages and so on if some of you are averse with the P360 Cameroonian Facebook page that all the members are equally doing that. Also, we had a deadline for all the members to uh, submit their videos of introduction, giving, uh, doing self-introduction, uh, their visions and missions and why they joined P360 initiative. Uh, for now, five members have succeeded in sending in their videos. Um, you haven't seen that on our page yet because our communications officer uh, has some little difficulties once he sorts them out. 
is going to work on the video so that we continue publishing. So he, he succeeded in finishing up just with mine that I'm sure that most of you saw uh, the last time I put on the video. So I think uh, for now, this is what we can get as report from the African continent. The other uh, chapters, we are still hoping that uh, the representatives of the other countries uh, at least initiate some activities. And of course, we always keep encouraging them so that we can have, we can get something started. We know that once we start, of course, it's a moving train. It's either you're on the train or out of the train. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I believe Chris, the president of Peace 3 360 Initiative, has some new staff members to introduce. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous today because so many incredible people uh, with so much uh, background, skills, passion. It's amazing to see such a great team. Um, it's a great people. Um, I'm so much, uh, very much honored. I'm, thank you so much for everybody for being part of this great movement. Uh, it's all about us, uh, not about an individual. It's all about our people that we want to serve. That's why we all here. All right, today I have uh, a privilege to introduce three incredible people. Um, I've been thinking of them. They have achieved uh, in the academics, in careers. Why they applied for a volunteer position in P360 initiative? Then I think I found an answer. They are the people who make the impact on people's life. They don't stop uh, when they find academic achievements or career achievements. They want to see uh, the people are doing better, a better future. So that's why they are here. So I'm very much honored to introduce Dr. Clint. Um, he's going to be our interim executive director. And uh, after six months, he'll be our executive director. He's a clinical psychologist. Uh, his wife run a, a counseling firm called Coco Counseling Center in Pennsylvania. Um, and he has a lot of experience uh, in uh, teaching and um, working with a lot of other mental health organizations uh, coming from a clinical uh, psychological uh, background. And um, more than that, when I talked with him, um, his life transformation and, um, and then his passion to serve the people. And I think we are together and, and our values like bring us together. And the second person I would like to introduce, Doc, uh, Andy, um, from Wisconsin. Um, and when I um, read his resume, I was like, better I, uh, I behave well, because he come from a um, military background, 27 years of serving the country. And now he's here with us as Deputy Executive Director for Administration. Wow, what a great privilege and honor to have him with us. Um, and then, better we all behave well. He's, he's, he'll be watching us, okay? <laughs> all right. And then third person, Dr. Arthur, Daniel Dion, our mental health director, she introduced uh, him to us. And uh, he uh, come from a research background and uh, he's going to work as our research advisor. So I would like to ask all three of them to do a self-introduction of uh, expression. And uh, please go ahead. Um, I, I can go, Chris. Can you hear me? Yeah, please. Hi, um, I'm Clint Stankavich. Um, I just want to say thank you for, you know, affording me the opportunity to be part of a, such an amazing organization. Um, I'm glad I had an, I'm in the car now on the way to do a little apple picking. Um, so don't try not to be distracted by the background, but, um, I uh, just wanted to kind of um, listen in to see a little bit more about what's going on. And, and I have to tell you, I'm very encouraged and excited about um, what our teams are doing, uh, some of the amazing initiatives uh, and things of that nature that are going on. So I'm, I'm very excited um, for our conversation, um, you know, on Tuesday to talk a little bit more about how I can fit in and, and contribute, um, you know, to the organization and, and to the mission. And 
one of the things I was very just in, impressed with, I think my wife and I are running a, a small Christ-based counseling center. We've all, often looked for opportunities to kind of give back, to get involved with some of the large, you know, in, in, in a large way. And when I came across the, the posting, and this is what, um, you know, drew me to the Peace 360 initiative was the, the fact that mental health was um, at the center. Um, and it's just such a, you know, important, con you know, concept, I think, in furthering peace. Uh, two things in particular, also the, the need for uh, um, prevention, rather and uh on the on the back end for recovery so just it, it's just a, a very um well-informed um, organization and i can't believe how much it's grown in, in a very short time i just thank you uh especially for for your work um and i'm excited and, and look forward to you know to working with you guys to uh, look forward to learning and meeting everybody and serving thank you Thank you, Dr. Klein. And uh, Mr. Andy, would you like to go next? Good morning. Uh, I'm Andy. I'm in uh, Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Uh, thanks for the, the great introduction. Yes, I, I'm just finishing up 27 years of service to, within it, with the Army. Uh, I'm in my retirement phase right now. I'm going through the transition phase from going into the military into the civilian sector and just started up a job and uh, with headquarters in uh, North Carolina. So maybe I'll get a chance to see some of you from uh, North Carolina out there at, at some point. Um, I, I, I have uh, one deployment uh, in 2006. Uh, I was deployed to Afghanistan um, and I was on a very unique uh, deployment uh, as a uh, combat advisor to the Afghan army. So I had a lot of um, intercultural changes and um, challenges trying to understand and help advise the Afghan army trying to stand up at the time. Um, unfortunately, it's the one of the longest going wars and hopefully we'll be out of there soon. Uh, I, I did uh, have a um, suffer from some uh, aspects from that from uh, PTSD. Uh, I, I did um, go through some counseling and, and other medical type treatments. Uh, and But one of the best things that helped me was the written uh, expression narrative uh, that my counselor had me do. Uh, and that uh, kind of resulted into a, uh, a book publication. Um, and I had a second book uh, that I wrote on that. And, and then I actually, did a uh, revision and that revision ended up being um, a combination of both the, the first one and of my deployment and the second part kind of focuses on the um, mental health uh, traumatic um, post-traumatic uh, stress disorders um, and so the, the first half is kind of the story of my deployment and the second half it kind of goes through uh, how it has affected me um, some some good things uh, that that may help and it addresses counseling and, and medications. It talks about uh, meditation. It, it addresses um, written written narrative, uh, or diary keeping, or, or different aspects of that, uh, and, and some simple things too, like breathing. And then it also addresses a lot of negative things that I've I've done about. Uh, borderline misuse of uh, uh, some pain medications and, and probably a higher uh, increases of alcohol than I probably should have. And, uh, so it addresses some of those negative things. And then and it also talks about the, the, the stigma, um, which we, we've kind of addressed on this conference call a little bit too, uh, about how it is hard to come forward and, and kind of ask for help. Um, so I uh, not, not uh, I'm, I'm not really making any anything on this, uh, but it is on Amazon is is a paperback, 250 pages or so, um, and Kindle. But um, it might be a really good tool to try to get a um, a different perspective on it than just the the, the clinical and the the um, and not to take away from you. 
I, I going through the, a lot of this. I did a lot of research, and I am a I am a believer of that it should be addressed as a PTSI as an injury as opposed to PTSD as a disorder. Um, because it was an injury, it's not something that just developed. It happened at a point in time. Um, and then I also am a believer of the difference between mental health and behavior health. Uh, with mental health addressing the you know the, the anxiety, the depression, those type of um, chemical imbalances, as opposed to the behavior health of alcohol abuse and and drug abuse. So um, yeah, I, I look forward to. Uh, um, coming out of retire or going into retirement and leaving the military and and uh, trying to help provide some more awareness for for these um, mental health concerns so thank you thank you so much Andy everybody's all oh, well everybody's uh, wow uh, we need to read that book <laughs> yes uh, such a blessing to have you thank you so much uh, I'm looking forward to see your leadership and uh, yeah, making uh, everyone else straight. <laughs> Thank you. And Dr. Arthur, would you like to go and express yourself, please? Yes, uh, I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity to be part of this group. And Chris, you are absolutely right when asking why is it that I want to be here? Why do I want volunteer here? And uh, it is exactly that. I want to be able to help, help myself, help my family, my neighbor, my community, my country, your country, everybody else. I want to make the world a better place where mental health is taken very seriously. Uh, my role here, I think, is going to be very different than what it is for most of you. I come from a, a lab, a bench-based research. I have used molecular biology and stem cell biology to understand how repair happens in damaged tissues, mostly in the liver, in the bone, in the cartilage. And now I wanted to understand a little bit more how these physiological effects affect the mind. And uh, so I want to look at this from a different perspective. I want to evaluate the research literature, how governments and communities are address addressing mental health and how we can actually incorporate this biological aspect into our own research internally, educate ourselves as part of P3I, and therefore be more empowered and enabled to help others, assisting our mentors in their help to others that are in need. What uh, Evan Hoffman was talking about, the plus and minus table that he used, the alienation versus sense of connection, despair versus hope, those are all chemical switches that are happening in your mind. How can we understand this from a cell-based approach? And how can we apply this to the betterment of people? So this is in essence what I would like to bring to the table and offer our research group, educating our mentors and therefore help our clients or the people in need for that. Uh, I would love to have a connection with the marketing group as well. I think there is lots that we can do in that regard to actually promote uh, our education system within, within our community and our online presence. So this is what I would like to bring to the table. Of course, I haven't talked to Brittany. I haven't talked to anybody yet because I'm so new at this. And we have to align ourselves and organize our thoughts and how we're going to approach this. But this is, in essence, what I would like to bring to the table. Thank you. So I think we're going to conclude with our Vice President, Dr. Brittany Fouts, and she's going to give us some words of encouragement. Thanks. Thanks so much. I didn't know I was speaking, so I didn't prepare anything. Um, just listening to everybody today, uh, you all have like really personally even empowered me. Um, it was you know, I, my background's working at the International Criminal Court and United Nations with human trafficking and former child soldiers. So a lot of the stuff that I work on on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you know, mental health is, you know, is something that's so important and it's so needed. And, you know, at times uh, it seems like it can also get really negative and depressing in a lot of the things I work on, but it's initiatives like this, what, Chris has started and you know taking part in zoom calls which really help 
us not only adjust to society, but it really helps us thrive. And it shows that Danielle actually mentioned something earlier today, and I'm not going to remember um, exactly what she wrote, but uh, it was some somewhere earlier in the chat box, and she was mentioning about um, how even during the coronavirus, you know, and everything that's going on, um, you know, she's she's been seeing almost like. Um, a different reality, but it's a better reality because it's brought us even more so to closer together, even though it's just by Zoom. And, you know, we're getting to know each other one on one and we're realizing, you know, how important, you know, it is to acknowledge mental health. So um, I'd like to thank everybody so much for taking part at this uh, event today. And thanks so much for putting the event together. So it's nice to e meet everybody. Thank you so much, Brittany, for mentioning that there is peace out there and we are working hard and it's so awesome to see your face and um, I, I want to just take a moment to, I know that we are over time, but it's also important that there are some, some folks, the interns, we have a lot. So the introductions at the beginning of our, our meeting today, we might have missed a few people and, and that, that, that is unfortunate and I really want to just give them a moment if there's anybody that needs to say hi just say where you are tell us your name show us your face turn your mic on anybody that hasn't spoken please do so now if that was everybody that wanted to speak I think we're gonna wrap up the meeting but yes I would say a final thank you to everybody and I hope you have a great rest of your day happy world mental health day y'all have a good one